All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Friday night. Hope everyone's having a good one. Welcome here to the weekend. 9.35 p.m., that's California time here. March 28th, 2025 is the date. Uh, latest activity, a 1.4 earthquake in Northern California. Got quite a bit of movement out here in the last 24 hours. Goodness, including that... Uh, Largest earthquake of 2025, 7.7 down here across the Myanmar area. Now, someone, you know, there's been a couple posts here and comments recently asking uh, why this got downgraded from an 8.7. Well, I don't believe there was any 8.7. Uh, that was from an app uh, that is not very reliable. But uh, an 8.7 would be a lot more damaging than a 7.7 .7 out here. So I believe that was just an error. But either way, hey, 7.7, .7, that's a pretty large earthquake. And it is the largest so far this year. A number of aftershocks occurring around the area as well. A lot of 4s, a lot of 5s. They did upgrade that aftershock from a 6.4 up to a 6.7. That aftershock occurring about 12 minutes following the main quake there. About 250 kilometer rupture out here across a, a strike slip boundary off of the plate boundary. Uh, and of course, history out here tells us that they do get some large earthquakes. It's been a while, so obviously this was going to fill in. But uh, a decent size earthquake, 7.7. .7. Uh, well, coming up on about that 24 hour time period here, uh, we still got uh, a window of opportunity for potential aftershock activity. We've only seen one 6.7 for an aftershock uh, and a number of fours out there. <laughs> what about the five category? You know, where did those go? Um, so it's a little odd to say that uh, we're only seeing a bunch of fours with no 5.0 aftershock. So we could still see some larger activity here overnight. Nothing, I don't think, comparable to the 7.7 .7 that struck here, but uh, watch for maybe another six or so in this area uh, aftershock. The last aftershock here in this area shows a 4.5 earthquake um, earlier this morning. Of course, that's not including the three-pointers that uh, I'm sure are happening out here. But the USGS, of course, doesn't cover that. Uh, so the largest earthquake, right? 7.7. .7. Now, on average, I do like to show this here, right? Because this is not anything of abnormal. It just happened to hit a uh, very populated area, and it was felt over a broad distance there. On average here, okay, if you guys could see that, uh, we have at least one eight-pointer or up per year. The, our last one was back in 2021, so a few years has passed. It's a little concerning. Uh, M7.0 to 7.9, there's at least 15 of them on average each year. 130, uh, 6.0 to 6.9. So where are we at here far as this year goes? Let's go ahead and take a look. We're at three seven-pointers so far this year. Uh, so if anything, if anything, say if we were to just have a, a seven-pointer um, every month till the end of the year, uh, we would be below average because on average here, 15 of them, we only, we're only at three so far, and we're almost into April. Uh, the six-pointers uh, minus the three there that gives you uh, 18. Well, I think we're even a little behind on that. 18 six-pointers so far this year. Should see uh, around 130. Of course, this was put out 2015 here, but uh, I don't think anything has changed, right? Uh, either way, as far as earthquake activity goes, you know, it, it's, it's going to happen out here. We're going to see large earthquakes. Eventually, we're going to see an eight-pointer, but it's not the end of the world. A little bit of movement here around the Curl Camp Chatka Trench this morning, a 4.9. Uh, the Mariana Trench here showing some elevated activity following all this movement earlier today. Look at this. Got, uh, uh, looks like a 4.3 this morning. Pretty deep one. And that's going to be this quake right here, followed up by a more shallow earthquake, and a little bit larger uh, earlier this evening with a 5.2. So keep an eye on this region here. Uh, strain could go either way uh, when it comes to the... Uh, the potential uh, negative effects here from that earthquake. Obviously, it released strain within that uh, zone that's been building up for a while, but also at the same time, that can have adverse effects uh, locally or distantly. And it looks like in this case, it may have applied further pressure out here in this region. So we got the Nankai Trough we got to watch, Mariana Trench, the Curl Cam Chatka Trench up here, uh, all capable of producing mega quakes. 
California, anything uh, going on here since all this big activity out uh, on the opposite side of the world? Uh, it doesn't look like it. A handful of smaller quakes out here, nothing above 2.5. Uh, aside from this one lonesome earthquake here across the Garlock Fault shear zone earlier this afternoon, a three-pointer. But aside from that, generally small microquake activity out there up and down the board. A little cluster going on here in the interchange between the Calaveras Fault and the San Andreas Fault here. Nothing big for now. Bay Area awfully quiet. One lonesome earthquake up here. Uh, Seattle area, 2.5 this afternoon. Pretty shallow earthquake activity. Uh, I know the trimmer has been heightened up here. Let's see what we got for Cascadia trimmer, which is right here. Double check. Make sure the audio's on. Audio's on. Bells are off. Okay. Uh, 69 epicenters of trimmer down across Northern California. That's today. Uh, yesterday, uh, a little bit down in nor Northern California as well. A little bit up there around Vancouver Island ranges. Um, but that's an interesting earthquake. That's a very shallow earthquake up here. A crustal quake. Uh, could have something to do here with the Cascadia subduction zone. That's another region we got to watch for some mega quake potential. Yellowstone, nothing going on up there, but uh, I will show you guys real quick the map, or at least a recorded overview. And there it is. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity going on there. Uh, but that seismic wave there, look at that. It, <laughs> pretty much shook the bell or shook the earth like a bell for a little bit uh it looks like maybe an hour of vibrational frequencies there traveling around and probably through the earth um making those very wavy lines there that was picked up all across the globe these seven pointers these upper sevens and bigger quakes can really ring the earth like a bell and that's what happened from that 7.7 .7. not a whole lot of earthquake activity happening out there across yellowstone i'm really not seeing anything of any abnormal activity um there's a little quake activity here it looks like this one right here right there right there I, i'm not for sure exactly where that's coming from Maybe some activity down in Idaho earlier this afternoon. It sits down here just a distance from Yellowstone, so that you know possibly will pick up that seismic signal that far out. But as far as Yellowstone itself goes, it's pretty quiet there, folks. Uh, oil fields of Texas getting hit, including one out around Wells, Texas. 3.5 earthquake. I wonder what's out here. Check out satellite view. Um... Looks like some houses going on out, a little bit of housing. As uh, far as wells, gas wells go, I'm not for sure there. Looks like, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm sure there's some out here. They're all over the place there in Texas. Um, a lot of times it's marked here on the map, but I'm, I'm just not seeing it there. Anyway, a little bit of activity out there. New Madrid seismic zone quiet. Eastern portion of the country quiet as well. Earlier today, when we were, well, actually this morning when we were doing the update, another 6.6 .6 came in here across the Mid Atlantic Ridge. Uh, since then, uh, really not a whole lot of uptick. Uh, I guess there's these two earthquakes up here in Afghanistan, pretty deep earthquakes there that are fairly new following all these events earlier today with that larger event down in Myanmar and also the 6.6 uh, .6 in the Atlantic. Uh, so hard to say exactly where it could be next, but uh, we'll definitely keep an eye on it there. That was a pretty powerful earthquake, let me tell you. Uh, New Zealand seen a bunch of threes down there. Kermadec Trench as well, some deeper movement. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, let's see. South America pretty quiet. All right, so just kind of keep an eye on things here. Nothing new to report there across Santorini. It looks like some smaller quake activity, but uh, that's about it. And also, and just real quick here, folks, we had an X flare, but this X flare did not happen first. Uh, this X flare happened after the fact of that large earthquake activity last night. So, you know, I, I've done this before. I've tried to put hand. I've tried to compare that theory that space weather activity directly affects earthquakes and whatnot. Um, and we've gone back on this. I spent an hour here about a year ago making a video exploring past solar events and how, like, days later uh, it uh, created 
uh, some larger events, larger earthquake activity. But this flare right here happened after the fact. And prior to that, there was nothing for weeks. You know, so it's not like we had an X flare here, which is right here. Pretty powerful flare. That's going to be this one right here. Very dynamic looking, dramatic looking. I think one of the more impressive uh, eruptions there that I've seen in, oh man, quite a few years, I would say. Had that been pointing at the Earth, we'd be talking about some spectacular auroras in the in the nights ahead. But that's not the case. There's not even going to be a glancing blow from that. That's way out there on the eastern limb. And um, but getting back to what I was saying here, that 7.7 .7 struck um, literally eight hours prior to this X flare. So that was not related to any earthquake activity. Um, you know, I, I do like to explore that option but this is one of those times here where it, it just hasn't i'm more leaning towards that uh when we get bombarded by protons it seems to stir things up um far as earthquake activity goes but i, I don't there's really not a whole lot of proton events happening right now it looks pretty quiet there on the uh d-layer absorption map anyway flare activity Got to watch this sunspot out here. It looks like it's still popping off some sea flare activity. There's another M flare that popped off earlier this afternoon. Also, another sunspot down here, further out back uh, on the far side of the sun there, south of the 4046. That's the culprit of the X flare today. And it was uh, not a huge X flare. The X, uh, uh, what is that, 1.2? What's this area right here? But there's another one back over there. There's another sunspot. Looks like it's fairly active. Barely visible right here where the uh, the minus signal is or the uh, magnification symbol is. Not named yet. But yeah, that was a X 1.1. Not a big X flare whatsoever. But it's one of the more stronger flares we've seen here in the last couple months. After It's just been quiet for solar flaring activity. But I think that's coming to an end here with these... Uh, two new sunspots here on the eastern limb those will rotate into the earth directed view in the days ahead and therefore the flare chat the flare threat has been bumped up uh to about 20 percent chance that's probably good i need to change mine up to that as well i bumped it up to about five but now we got a newer sunspot back there that uh, uh qualifies for a little bit larger flare threat and flare at about 50 percent chance so Watch those two sunspots there. Nothing major planned in the Aurora forecast. Pretty quiet out there for now. Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Just some thunderstorm activity out there on the map uh, for tonight. But look at this for Sunday. We got a huge, absolutely huge severe weather area. It almost covers the entire eastern portion of the country. Uh, that is crazy. Um, and this could get revised as well so we'll have to watch that but we're talking about 25 million people in the enhanced area slight risk of 45 million people yeah we could be talking about uh, some tornado activity and uh, who knows what else is in there so we'll check that tomorrow as we get a little bit better perspective of what could take place there that's going to be this sunday all right folks seismograph stations out there look uh it looked pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on out there. The earth has calmed down after ringing like a bell from that 7.7 .7 earthquake. You know, those seismic waves that can definitely uh, uh, travel the earth a couple times there. Sometimes these large events can trigger earthquakes thousands of miles away or earthquake swarms. So far, I've, you know, like I say, the only noticeable thing popping up today is a Mariana Trench showing some activity and this deeper activity north here around Afghanistan. But uh, I guess we'll just kind of keep an eye on things here. See what happens overnight. Enjoy your Friday night, folks. I'm out of here. I know I'm getting old. I'm calling it a night. But 9.49, that's a, that's a decent bedtime, right? 10 o'clock. I'm not, I'm not much of a night owl like I used to be, staying up till 2, 3 in the morning. Uh, I just can't do that anymore. I, I like to go to bed around 10 o'clock. That's perfect time for me. That way I don't sleep all day. I can get up tomorrow and enjoy the day. Have a good one. We'll see you guys out here tomorrow for the Saturday morning update. Stay safe, everyone.